The UK government has made a major breakthrough in the fight against COVID-19. Dexamethasone has proven to be the first life-saving drug. Researchers say it has cut the risk of death by a third for patients on ventilators. However, at the same time, the UK government is coming under fire for the restructuring of its international aid ministry. Our UK correspondent, Ali Barrett, joins us now for more. Thanks for joining us, Ali. So let's start off with international aid. Boris Johnson is combining the Foreign Office with the British government's international aid department. Why? Well, he says that all of uh, the operations of those two departments need to be streamlined rather than uh, what, in his view, has been happening, uh, which has been a slightly confusing picture of the UK's position and operations and the way it spends its money around the world on the global stage. So the Department for International uh, Development, which spends uh, Britain's aid budget, will now come under the auspices, really, of a combined department, which is effectively a larger foreign office. Now, Boris Johnson says the reason he's doing that is to make sure uh, that one department knows exactly where all the money is going and for what reason uh, and can be much more focused on the global Britain brand uh, that Boris Johnson wants to portray around the world. Now, critics will say and are saying that that is dangerous and will mean that Britain's role uh, uh, on the world stage is, is actually potentially diminished. He insists that won't happen uh, and says it is the time. Uh, to move everything under one roof so that it can be, as I say, streamlined and more focused in terms of delivery. So what effect will that have on aid and development on the African continent? Well, you know, Boris Johnson insists uh, that Britain's aid spending is going to continue everywhere around the world, in Africa uh, as well. But he also believes, um, and he's also saying that the UK commitment, by the way, to uh, the amount of money that it spends on aid is going to continue as well. 0.7% of the country's GDP. The UK believes it's the only G7 country that actually sticks to uh, that commitment. And he says that that number is going to continue. Now, interestingly, of course, because of the uh, coronavirus pandemic and the devastating effect that that's having on the UK economy, like uh, other economies around the world, that actually does mean that for 2020, the amount of money Britain has available to spend on aid in Africa and elsewhere is likely to shrink as the economy shrinks, because that 0.7% is going to be 0.7% of a lower GDP uh, overall. Now, uh, the UK is also potentially, though, going to see a refocusing uh, of some of its priorities. That may mean that some spending moves away from Africa to other parts of the world. Uh, priorities will change uh, on a yearly basis, obviously. But uh, for now, as I say, Boris Johnson insists that spending uh, will continue uh, and that many of those projects that Britain is committed to around the world and in Africa uh, particularly will continue too. It'll just be handled by a different department. Mm. So we'd expect Labour leader Sir Keir Starmer to be critical, but even former Tory Prime Minister David Cameron has come out and criticised the merger. Is this really a smoke screen over John Johnson's mishandling of the COVID-19 pandemic? Certainly that's what Keir Starmer has accused him of, of uh, and several other politicians have, have done the same today. They're saying that, look, that this is uh, a government that's really in crisis and therefore needed uh, something to distract uh, the voters with. Uh, you know, I suspect that actually many voters here in the UK uh, won't be paying a huge amount of attention to the streamlining of aid spending in this way and the merger of two government uh, departments. Mm -hmm. Boris Johnson insists that is not the reason that he's doing it, but you're quite right that several former prime ministers have criticised him already for merging these two departments. Uh, David Cameron saying he believes it's uh, the wrong thing to do. He called it a big mistake. It's certainly a controversial move from the prime minister. So let's move on to uh, progress made uh, in light of COVID-19 treatment. So a team at Oxford University have found that a cheap steroid could help in the fight against the coronavirus. We've heard this before. So how much of it is in fact a breakthrough? This is a major breakthrough. British scientists are very, very clear about that. This is something not uh, in a testing phase or in a, uh, a trial that hasn't yet concluded. This is now a concluded trial uh, carried out in the UK, which has concluded that dexamethasone, a cheap and widely available steroid, 
does make a major difference uh, in the treatment of some patients who have COVID-19 uh, and have it seriously. This is really working in many patients who are either on mechanical ventilation with COVID-19 or are being treated with oxygen. And uh, uh, officials believe here in the UK that had it been available right from the start of the coronavirus crisis in the UK, the UK outbreak, it could have saved as many as 5,000 lives. Now, what that also means is that it could therefore save many more thousands of lives all around the world uh, as the pandemic continues to run uh, its course. Part of the reason that UK officials are so very excited about this, as I say, is that it's cheap and widely available already. So they believe that uh, many developing countries will already have stocks of dexamethasone that they can start using and they can buy more dexamethasone cheaply uh, to treat further uh, new patients as well. We're talking about uh, a steroid that costs uh, you know, a handful of rand uh, per course. So it really is a very cheap drug indeed. That's part of the reason that the UK uh, is so very excited about it. They also stress, though, the scientists, that while this is a major breakthrough, it's not a cure, so it doesn't mean you can remove social distancing guidelines completely that are in place here in the UK and in other parts of the world. They also say that research will continue on other drugs that may be helpful so that you could add those to dexamethasone to bring even better outcomes than dexamethasone uh, will lead to on its own. They also stress that they are working uh, as hard and as fast as they can to try and uh, secure a vaccine as well because that clearly uh, is going to be the, uh, the great prize here, even greater than the, uh, the breakthrough that Boris Johnson, the British Prime Minister, has been hailing here in the UK today. All right, thank you very much for that update from the UK, Ollie Barrett.